Hello everyone, it's Stella here, your host for BB and Yaya Show. Welcome to the place where people come to get inspired about life. Here on this channel, we share people's relationships, love life, friendships, and family experiences while trying to provide them with solutions in the comment section. If this is your first time watching one of our episodes, then please show some love to us by smashing the like button and subscribe to our channel. At the end of each video, do not forget to write in the comment section the solutions that you think will help the people who send us their life problems and ask for solutions. We are here to help everyone who needs life advice in any good or difficult situation. So you can share your stories with us at the email address that pops up on the screen if you need any help. Alright guys, in today's episode, we are going to discuss not one, but two different stories of some gentlemen who are serving their country. This episode shows how our soldiers are not getting what they actually deserve in life, even after sacrificing a lot of things for the sake of the country and people. So, without any delay, let's get into the first story of our brave soldier. I married my high school sweetheart in December 2008, nine days before I turned 19 and two and a half months after joining the Navy. We had been dating over three years and had been living together for nearly two. She stayed in Kansas while I was being trained in Illinois. Rumors started getting to me about infidelity, but I immediately dismissed them. She would take the train to visit me every six weeks or so. While in town on our second or third visit, we were on base so she can be issued a military dependent ID. While waiting in the reception area, she received a text message. More out of boredom than nosiness, I glanced at her phone as she opened it. The message read, Hey babe, I confronted her in the parking lot, and after arguing a while, she convinced me that he was just a friend and used the term babe the same way a waitress would. She eventually convinced me it was platonic, and things were back to normal. When I returned home on leave from training, visiting before flying out to my ship, which was deployed to the Arabian Gulf, things were a little weird. She slept with her phone in her bra, whereas before she almost always slept nude. She didn't want to go out to do things with me. Also, in the 16 days I was home, we had intercourse four times, even though it had been a while since we'd been together and was going to be even longer until I returned from deployment. One night, she woke to use the bathroom and left her phone on the bed. The movement roused me and being slightly suspicious, I grabbed her phone. I hesitated, feeling guilty that I was spying on her, but looked anyway. Her call history and message inbox, as well as her sent items, were completely empty, which was strange because she had called her mother earlier that day and I had seen her answer a few texts. I went to sleep and did not mention it. I flew out to meet my ship with four months until our return to home port. Deployment was rough, and we argued a few times, mostly about money. She was supposed to be saving money. Having no access to the internet to check our joint account, I took her word that she was slowly but steadily putting away several thousand dollars. Seven days before my ship returned from deployment, I got a Dear John email from her. She tossed around words such as independent and phrases like too young and maybe we'll get back together in the future. I begged and pleaded with her, saying things like please don't leave and I love you, we can make this work. She declined my propositions and upon returning to land, I bitterly headed to the nearest branch of my bank to cut her off from the substantial financial support she was getting. When I arrived, I discovered that she had not in fact left me to be more independent. My account fell shy of my rough estimates to the tune of about $10,000. I never did the math to get an accurate account of all the money she spent for fear of being driven into spontaneous fits of violence towards any and all inanimate objects in my immediate vicinity, but that's my nearest guess. Also, the shame in all of this is that my wife left me for an 18-year-old high school dropout with no job or car. This is not how you repay someone who loved and trusted you with everything. We are getting more selfish and leaving the ones who love us with broken hearts without even thinking about what it might lead to. 
he didn't deserve to be cheated on like that. But as we all know, everything happens for a reason. Maybe there is a better person to come in his life who will love and care for him the way he deserves. I will ask you a quick favor, and this is to take one second of your time to show some support to this gentleman that came forward with his story by smashing the like button. Those likes and comments will help him a lot and make him move forward in life. Thank you. Now, let's move to the second story. I was married for almost seven years, and near the end, I was in the U.S. Army Military Police. Being in this unit does not provide much leeway when it comes to non-military activity. I was close enough that I could go home every other weekend or so. One weekend, I arrived at my home and found this 13-year-old girl in my house. I asked her who she was. She explained she was a runaway girl and she was taking care of my two-and-a-half-year-old son. I asked where my wife was. She explained that my wife had already been gone for almost a week. The young girl was never told where my wife was going or how long she would be gone. I found all of my clothes gone. The refrigerator was practically empty and only $20 was left behind for food. I took one week emergency leave to try and locate someone who might have known where my wife had gone. People we knew could not tell me anything. Her sisters and parents did not know where she left and had abandoned the child. I returned to base, and during the week of my return, my wife had called one of her sisters and told her that she was in another state with two other women and did not know of her return. The sister asked her about our son, and she replied that she was no longer a mother or a wife. A Catholic priest got involved, and it was discovered that she was experiencing a mental problem that concerned her identity. As time went on, I was awarded custody of the child. I waited for my wife's return for three years, but was advised to take my son and get on with our lives. My wife began smoking and drinking and had not seen my son for 22 years. Finally, my son went to see her. He only saw her three times and would never discuss his visits with her. After the third visit, my son showed photos of the woman. She had just turned 50, and I swear that she looked 80. After my son's third visit, she died of liver shutdown. The sadness of all this is my son never got to know who his mother was, and she never got to know who her son was. This seemed to be more of a heartbreaking story. None of us deserve to face such mental problems which could break the people connected to us. Out of all, I feel sorry for the son, who could not get to know his mother. So, viewers, I will request you to help him with some suggestions and what you would do to overcome the pain he is facing. Go ahead now and tell both of these gentlemen what you would have done or what you think you would do if you were in their place. And if you think that you also need some advice on life issues, then you could always feel free and share your story with us at this email address, bb.yaya.wisdom at gmail.com. Love you. Thank you for watching the video. I will see you soon with another story. And don't forget to smash the like button, share the video with others so that they can contribute with their solutions, and press the bell icon to subscribe. Bye!